The hot bulb engine is a type of internal combustion engine in which fuel ignites by coming in contact with a red hot metal surface inside a bulb, followed by the introduction of air oxygen compressed into the hot bulb chamber by the rising piston. There is some ignition when the fuel is introduced, but it quickly uses up the available oxygen in the bulb. Vigorous ignition takes place only when sufficient oxygen is supplied to the hot bulb chamber on the compression stroke of the engine. Most hot bulb engines were produced as one or two cylinder, low speed two stroke crankcase scavenged units. History Four-stroke Hornsby Ackroyd oil engine The concept of this engine was established by Herbert Ackroyd Stewart, an English inventor. The first prototypes were built in 1886 and production started in 1891 by Richard Hornsby and Sons of Grantham, Lincolnshire, England under the title Hornsby Ackroyd Patent Oil Engine under license. Two-stroke hot bulb engines Some years later, Ackroyd Stewart's design was further developed in the United States by the German emigrants Meats and Weiss, who combined the hot bulb engine with the two-stroke scavenging principle, developed by Joseph Day to provide nearly twice the power, as compared to a four-stroke engine of same size. Similar engines, for agricultural and marine use, were built by J. V. Svensson's Automobile Fabric, Bollanders, Lysekels Mechaniska Verkstad, Pythagoras Engine Factory and many other factories in Sweden. Comparison to the diesel engine Ackroyd Stewart's engine was the first internal combustion engine to use a pressurized fuel injection system and also the first using a separate vaporizing combustion chamber. It is the forerunner of all hot bulb engines, which are considered kind of predecessors of the similar diesel engine, developed a few years later. However, the Hornsby Ackroyd oil engine and other hot bulb engines are distinctly different from Rudolf Diesel's design, where ignition occurs alone through the heat of compression. An oil engine will have a decent compression ratio between 3 to 1 and 5 to 1, where a typical diesel engine will have a much harder achieved compression ratio ranging between 15 to 1 and 20 to 1, making it a lot more efficient. Also the fuel is injected easily during the early intake stroke and not at the peak of compression with a high-pressure diesel injection pump. <laughs> <laughs> Operation and working cycle The hot bulb engine shares its basic layout with nearly all other internal combustion engines, in that it has a piston, inside a cylinder, connected to a flywheel by a connecting rod and crankshaft. Ackroyd Stewart's original engine operated on the four-stroke cycle induction, compression, power and exhaust, and Hornsby continued to build engines to this design, as did several other British manufacturers such as Blackstone and Crossley. Manufacturers in Europe, Scandinavia and in the United States built engines working on the two-stroke cycle with crankcase scavenging. The latter type formed the majority of hot bulb engine production. The flow of gases through the engine is controlled by valves in four-stroke engines, and by the piston covering and uncovering ports in the cylinder wall in two strokes. In the hot bulb engine, combustion takes place in a separated combustion chamber, the vaporizer also called the hot bulb, usually mounted on the cylinder head, into which fuel is sprayed. It is connected to the cylinder by a narrow passage and is heated by combustion gases while running. An external flame, such as a blowtorch or slow burning wick, is used for starting. On later models, electric heating or pyrotechnics were sometimes used. Another method was the inclusion of a spark plug and vibrator coil ignition. The engine would be started on petrol gasoline and switched over to oil after warming to running temperature. The preheating time depends on the engine design, the type of heating used and the ambient temperature, but for most engines in a temperate climate generally ranges from 2 to 5 minutes to as much as half an hour if operating in extreme cold or the engine is especially large. The engine is then turned over, usually by hand, but sometimes by compressed air or an electric motor. 
Once the engine is running, the heat of compression and ignition maintains the hot bulb at the necessary temperature, and the blow lamp or other heat source can be removed. Thereafter, the engine requires no external heat and requires only a supply of air, fuel oil and lubricating oil to run. However, under low power the bulb could cool off too much, and a throttle can cut down the cold fresh air supply. Also, as the engine's load is increased, so does the temperature of the bulb, causing the ignition period to advance. To counteract pre ignition, water is dripped into the air intake. Equally, if the load on the engine is low, combustion temperatures may not be sufficient to maintain the temperature of the hot bulb. Many hot bulb engines cannot be run off load without auxiliary heating for this reason. The fact that the engine can be left unattended for long periods while running made hot bulb engines a popular choice for applications requiring a steady power output, such as farm tractors, generators, pumps and canal boat propulsion. Four-stroke engines Air is drawn into the cylinder through the intake valve as the piston descends the induction stroke. During the same stroke, fuel is sprayed into the vaporizer by a mechanical jerk type fuel pump through a nozzle. The air in the cylinder is then forced through the top of the cylinder as the piston rises the compression stroke through the opening into the vaporizer, where it is compressed and its temperature rises. The vaporized fuel mixes with the compressed air and ignites primarily due to the heat of the hot bulb generated while running, or heat applied to the hot bulb prior to starting. By contracting the bulb to a very narrow neck where it attaches to the cylinder, a high degree of turbulence is set up as the ignited gases flash through the neck into the cylinder, where combustion is completed. The resulting pressure drives the piston down the power stroke. The piston's action is converted to a rotary motion by the crankshaft flywheel assembly, to which equipment can be attached for work to be performed. The flywheel stores momentum, some of which is used to turn the engine when power is not being produced. The piston rises, expelling exhaust gases through the exhaust valve the, exhaust stroke. the cycle then starts again. Two-stroke engines The cycle starts with the piston at the bottom of its stroke. As it rises, it draws air into the crankcase through the inlet port. At the same time fuel is sprayed into the vaporizer. The charge of air on top of the piston is compressed into the vaporizer, where it is mixed with the atomized fuel and ignites. The piston is driven down the cylinder. As it descends, the piston first uncovers the exhaust port. The pressurized exhaust gases flow out of the cylinder. A fraction after the exhaust port is uncovered, the descending piston uncovers the transfer port. The piston is now pressurizing the air in the crankcase, which is forced through the transfer port and into the space above the piston. Part of the incoming air charge is lost out of the still open exhaust port to ensure all the exhaust gases are cleared from the cylinder, a process known as scavenging. The piston then reaches the bottom of its stroke and begins to rise again, drawing a fresh charge of air into the crankcase and completing the cycle. Induction and compression are carried out on the upward stroke, while power and exhaust occur on the downward stroke. A supply of lubricating oil must be fed to the crankcase to supply the crankshaft bearings. Since the crankcase is also used to supply air to the engine, the engine's lubricating oil is carried into the cylinder with the air charge, burnt during combustion and carried out of the exhaust. The oil carried from the crankcase to the cylinder is used to lubricate the piston. This means that a two-stroke hot bulb engine will gradually burn its supply of lubricating oil, a design known as a total loss lubricating system. There were also designs that employed a scavenge pump or similar to remove oil from the crankcase and return it to the lubricating oil reservoir. Land's hot bulb tractors and their many imitators had this feature. This reduced oil consumption considerably. In addition, if excess crankcase oil is present on startup, there is a danger of the engine starting and accelerating uncontrollably to well past the speed limits of the rotating and reciprocating components. This can result in destruction of the engine. There is normally a bung or stopcock that allows draining of the crankcase before starting. 
The lack of valves and the doubled up working cycle also means that a two stroke hot bulb engine can run equally well in both directions. A common starting technique for smaller two stroke engines is to turn the engine over against the normal direction of rotation. The piston will bounce off the compression phase with sufficient force to spin the engine the correct way and start it. This bi directional running was an advantage in marine applications, as the engine could, like the steam engine, drive a vessel forward or in reverse without the need for a gearbox. The direction could be reversed either by stopping the engine and starting it again in the other direction, or, with sufficient skill and timing on the part of the operator, slowing the engine until it carried just enough momentum to bounce against its own compression and run the other way. This was an undesirable quality in hot bulb powered tractors equipped with gearboxes. At very low engine speeds the engine could reverse itself almost without any change in sound or running quality and without the driver noticing until the tractor drove in the opposite direction to that intended. Lands Bulldog tractors featured a dial, mechanically driven by the engine, that showed a spinning arrow. The arrow pointed in the direction of normal engine rotation, if the dial spun the other way, the engine had reversed itself. Advantages At the time the hot bulb engine was invented, its great attractions were its efficiency, simplicity, and ease of operation in comparison to the steam engine, which was then the dominant source of power in industry. Condenserless steam engines achieved an average thermal efficiency the fraction of generated heat that is actually turned into useful work of around 6%. Hot bulb engines could easily achieve 12% thermal efficiency. From the 1910s to the 1950s, hot bulb engines were more economical to manufacture with their low pressure crude fuel injection and had a lower compression ratio than diesel's compression ignition engines. The hot bulb engine is much simpler to construct and operate than the steam engine. Boilers require at least one person to add water and fuel as needed and to monitor pressure to prevent overpressure and a resulting explosion. If fitted with automatic lubrication systems and a governor to control engine speed, a hot bulb engine could be left running unattended for hours at a time. Another attraction was their safety. A steam engine, with its exposed fire and hot boiler, steam pipes and working cylinder could not be used in flammable conditions, such as munitions factories or fuel refineries. Hot bulb engines also produced cleaner exhaust fumes. A big danger with the steam engine was that if the boiler pressure grew too high and the safety valve failed, a highly dangerous explosion could occur, although this was a relatively rare occurrence by the time the hot bulb engine was invented. A more common problem was that if the water level in the boiler of a steam engine dropped too low, the lead plug in the crown of the furnace would melt, extinguishing the fire. If a hot bulb engine ran out of fuel, it would simply stop and could be immediately restarted with more fuel. The water cooling was usually closed circuit, so no water loss would occur unless there was a leak. If the cooling water ran low, the engine would seize through overheating a major problem, but it carried no danger of explosion. Compared with steam, petrol auto cycle, and compression ignition diesel cycle engines, hot bulb engines are simpler, and therefore have fewer potential problems. There is no electrical system as found on a petrol engine, and no external boiler and steam system as on a steam engine. Another big attraction with the hot bulb engine was its ability to run on a wide range of fuels. Even poorly combustible fuels could be used, since a combination of vaporizer and compression ignition meant that such fuels could be made to burn. The usual fuel was fuel oil, similar to modern-day diesel fuel, but natural gas, kerosene, crude oil, vegetable oil or creosote could also be used. This made the hot bulb engine very cheap to run, since it could be run on readily available fuels. Some operators even ran engines on used engine oil, thus providing almost free power. Recently, this multi-fuel ability has led to an interest in using hot bulb engines in developing nations, where they can be run on locally produced biofuel. Due to the lengthy preheating time, hot bulb engines usually started easily, even in extremely cold conditions. 
This made them popular choices in cold regions, such as Canada and Scandinavia, where steam engines were not viable and early petrol and diesel engines could not be relied upon to operate. However, it also makes them unsuitable for short time running use, especially in an automobile. Uses The reliability of the hot bulb engine, their ability to run on many fuels and the fact that they can be left running for hours or days at a time made them extremely popular with agricultural, forestry and marine users, where they were used for pumping and for powering milling, sawing and threshing machinery. Hot bulb engines were also used on road rollers and tractors. J. V. Svensson's Motor Fabric, I. Augustendal in Stockholm, Sweden used hot bulb engines in their TYP-1 motor plow, produced from 1912 to 1925. Munktals Mechaniska Verkstads AB, in Eskilstuna, Sweden, produced agricultural tractors with hot bulb engines from 1913 onwards. Heinrich Lanz AG, in Mannheim, Germany, started to use hot bulb engines in 1921, in the Lanz Bulldog HL tractor. Other well-known tractor manufacturers that used bulb engines were Bubba, Gambino, Landini and Orsi in Italy, HSCS in Hungary, SFV in France, and Ursus in Poland. At the start of the 20th century there were several hundred European manufacturers of hot bulb engines for marine use. In Sweden alone there were over 70 manufacturers, of which Bolander is the best known. In the 1920s they had about 80% of the world market. The Norwegian Saab was a very popular hot bulb engine for small fishing boats, and many of them are still in working order. In America, Standard, Weber, Reed, Stickney, Oil City, and Fairbanks Morse built hot bulb engines. A limitation of the design of the engine was that it could only run over quite a narrow and slow speed band, typically 50 to 300 revolutions per minute. This made the hot bulb engine difficult to adapt to automotive uses, other than vehicles such as tractors, where speed was not a major requirement. This limitation was of little consequence for stationary applications, where the hot bulb engine was very popular. Owing to the lengthy pre-heating time, hot bulb engines only found favor with users who needed to run engines for long periods of time, where the pre-heating process only represented a small percentage of the overall running period. This included marine use—especially in fishing boats—and pumping or drainage duties. The hot bulb engine was invented at the same time that dynamos and electric light systems were perfected, and electricity generation was one of the hot bulb engine's main uses. The engine could achieve higher RPM than a standard reciprocating steam engine, although high-speed steam engines were developed during the 1890s, and its low fuel and maintenance requirements, including the ability to be operated and maintained by only one person, made it ideal for small-scale power generation. Generator sets driven by hot bulb engines were installed in numerous large houses in Europe, especially in rural areas, as well as in factories, theaters, lighthouses, radio stations and many other locations where a centralized electrical grid was not available. Usually, the dynamo or alternator would be driven off the engine's flywheel by a flat belt, to allow the necessary gearing up, making the generator turn at a faster speed than the engine. Companies such as Armstrong Whitworth and Bolton Paul manufactured and supplied complete generating sets, both the engine and generator, from the 1900s to the late 1920s, when the formation of national grid systems throughout the world and the replacement of the hot bulb engine by the diesel engine caused a drop in demand. The engines were also used in areas where the fire of a steam engine would be an unacceptable fire risk. Ackroyd Stewart developed the world's first locomotive powered by a hot bulb oil engine, the Lachesis, for the Royal Arsenal, Woolwich, where the use of locomotives had previously been impossible due to the risk. Hot bulb engines proved very popular for industrial engines in the early 20th century, but lacked the power to be used in anything larger. Topic compression ignition Herbert Ackroyd Stewart was always keen to improve the efficiency of his engine. The obvious way to do this was to raise the compression ratio to increase the engine's thermal efficiency. 
however, above ratios of around 8 to 1 the fuel oil in the vaporizer would ignite before the piston reached the limit of its travel. This pre-ignition caused rough running, power loss and ultimately engine damage. See engine knocking. Working with engineers at Hornsby's, Ackroyd Stewart developed a system whereby the compression ratio was increased to as much as 18 to 1 and fuel oil was delivered to the cylinder only when the piston reached top dead center, thus preventing pre ignition. However, it was patented through U.S. Patent 845140 Combustion Engine, dated February 26, 1907. So, such an innovation is attributed to Rudolf Diesel, who originally patented the injection of fuel just before end of compression stroke. And the water jacketed vaporizer only slightly alleviated auto ignition and contributed to heat transfer losses to water, decreasing the efficiency of engine. This system was patented in October 1890 and development continued. In 1892, five years before Rudolf Diesel's first successful prototype, engineers at Hornsby's built an experimental engine that replaced vaporizer with a standard cylinder head and a high pressure fuel nozzle system. It was the world's first internal combustion engine to run on purely compression ignition. However, a fully practical fuel injection system required machining techniques and tolerances that were not then possible in mass production. The company was also working at full capacity to build and sell hot bulb engines, so they didn't pursue these developments. Hornsby's claimed the engine could start cold and run for six hours, but such a claim seems highly unlikely, because they didn't patent such a system, and it would have violated Rudolf Diesel's patent for his engine. Also, there is no evidence for other than the Richard Hornsby & Sons advertisement that makes the claim. Replacement <inaudible> 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 From around 1910, the diesel engine was improved dramatically, with more power being available at greater efficiencies than the hot bulb engine could manage. Diesel engines can achieve over 50% efficiency if designed with maximum economy in mind, and they offered greater power for a given engine size due to the more efficient combustion method. They had no hot bulb, relying purely on compression ignition, and offered greater ease of use, as they required no preheating. The hot bulb engine was limited in its scope in terms of speed and overall power to size ratio. To make a hot bulb engine capable of powering a ship or locomotive, it would have been prohibitively large and heavy. The hot bulb engines used in Landini tractors were as much as 20 liters in capacity for relatively low power outputs. The main limit of the hot bulb engine's power and speed was its method of combustion. In a diesel engine combustion is controlled by injecting fuel into compressed air, since no combustion can take place until fuel is injected, the timing and duration of combustion can be tightly controlled. In the hot bulb engine fuel was injected into the cylinder before compression began, and combustion would start as the air charge met the vaporized fuel in the hot bulb during the compression stroke. This meant that combustion was difficult to control to any degree of precision. Parts of the fuel charge throughout the hot bulb would ignite at different times, often before the piston had completed the compression stroke. This is identical to pre-ignition in a conventional spark ignition engine and leads to uneven forces and high thermal and physical stresses on the engine's internal parts, especially the piston. In the hot bulb engine this problem could only be overcome by keeping the overall engine speeds low, the fuel quantity injected in each cycle small and the engine's components very heavily built. This resulted in a very durable engine, which was also large and heavy while producing a relatively low power output. Ideas such as water injection to reduce pre-ignition and the hot tube engine which allowed the volume of the vaporizer to be altered with engine speed, thus changing the overall compression ratio added complexity and cost and still could not provide power to weight ratios in the same league as the rapidly developing diesel engine. To create even combustion throughout the multiple hot bulbs in multi-cylinder engines is difficult. The hot bulb engine's low compression ratio in comparison to diesel engines limited its efficiency, power output and speed. 
most hot bulb engines could run at a maximum speed of around 100 revolutions per minute, while by the 1930s high-speed diesel engines capable of 2,000 revolutions per minute were being built. Also, due to the design of hot bulb and the limitations of current technology in regard to the injector system, most hot bulb engines were single-speed engines, running at a fixed speed, or in a very narrow speed range. Diesel engines can be designed to operate over a much wider speed range, making them more versatile. This made these medium-sized diesels a very popular choice for use in generator sets, replacing the hot bulb engine as the engine of choice for small-scale power generation. The development of small-capacity, high-speed diesel engines in the 1930s and 1940s, led to hot bulb engines falling dramatically out of favor. The last large-scale manufacturer of hot bulb engines stopped producing them in the 1950s and they are now virtually extinct in commercial use, except in very remote areas of the developing world. An exception to this is marine use. Hot bulb engines were widely fitted to inland barges and narrow boats in Europe. The United Kingdom's first two self-powered motor narrowboats, Cadbury's Bourneville I and Bourneville II in 1911 were powered by 15 horsepower Bolander single cylinder hot bulb engines and this type became common between the 1920s and the 1950s with hot bulb engines being generally long lived and ideally suited to such a use it is not uncommon to find vessels still fitted with their original hot bulb engines today although there is a common misconception that model glow plug engines are a variation of the hot bulb engine this is not the case Model glow engines are catalytic ignition engines. They take advantage of a reaction between platinum in the glow plug coil and methyl alcohol vapor whereby at certain temperatures and pressures platinum will glow in contact with the vapor. <laughs> Hot bulb pseudo-diesel development Topic eighteen nineties minus one thousand nine hundred and ten. The hot bulb engine is often confused with the diesel engine, and it is true that the two engines are very similar. A hot bulb engine features a prominent hot bulb vaporizer, a diesel engine does not. Other significant differences are the hot bulb engine mostly reuses the heat retained in the vaporizer to ignite the fuel, achieving about 12% efficiency. The diesel engine uses only compression to ignite the fuel. It operates at pressures many times higher than the hot bulb engine, resulting in over 50% efficiency with large diesels. The hot bulb engine requires preheating of the hot bulb, often with a torch, for about 15 minutes before starting. There is also a crucial difference in the timing of the fuel injection process. In the hot bulb engine, before 1910, fuel was injected earlier into the vaporizer during the intake stroke. This causes the start of combustion to be out of synchronization with the crank angle, meaning that the engine would only run smoothly at one low speed or load. If the engine's load increased, so would the temperature of the bulb, causing the ignition period to advance, causing pre-ignition. To counteract pre-ignition, water would be dripped into the air intake, providing some flexibility. In the diesel engine, fuel is injected into the cylinder, with an adjusted timing relative to the engine speed and load. Shortly before the top dead center of the compression stroke is reached, there is another, detailed difference in the method of fuel injection. The hot bulb engine uses a medium pressure pump to deliver fuel to the cylinder, through a simple nozzle. In the original diesel engine, fuel was sprayed into the cylinder by high-pressure compressed air, through an injector. The camshaft lifted a spring-loaded pin to initiate fuel delivery through the nozzle, before World War I technology had not advanced to the point that oil engines could run faster than 150 revolutions per minute. The structure of these engines were similar to steam engines, and without pressure-fed lubrication. In hot bulb engines, fuel is injected at low pressure, using a more economical and more reliable, and simpler configuration. However, by not using compressed air injection it is less efficient. In this period diesel and hot bulb engines were four-stroke. 
In 1902 F. Rundloff invented the two-stroke crankcase scavenged engine that went on to become the prevalent hot bulb type engine. Topic: 1910 to 1950s. Direct injected small diesel engines still were not practical and the prechambered indirect injection engine was invented along with the requirement of glow plugs to be used for starting. With technology developed by Robert Bosch GmbH pump and injector systems could be built to run at a much higher pressure. Combined with high-precision injectors, high-speed diesels were produced from 1927. The hot bulbs started to develop cracks and breakups and were gradually replaced by water-cooled cylinder heads with a flat hot spot. Over time the compression ratios were increased from 3 to 1 to 14 to 1. Fuel injection started from 135 degrees before top dead center with low compression down to 20 degrees before top dead center with later higher compression engines increasing the hot air factor for ignition and increasing the fuel efficiency. Glow plugs finally replaced the preheating with a blowtorch methods and engine speeds were increased, resulting in what is now classified as an indirect injection diesel. Hot bulb or prechambered engines were always easier to produce, more reliable, and could handle smaller amounts of fuel in smaller engines than the direct injected, pure diesels could. Topic: <laughs> Production. Hot bulb engines were built by a large number of manufacturers, usually in modest series. These engines were slow running, 300 to 400 revolutions per minute, and mostly with cast iron parts, including pistons. The fuel pump was usually made with a brass housing and steel plunger, operating with a variable stroke length. This resulted in a simple, rugged, heavy engine. Therefore, they could be machined in an average machine shop without special tools. The Pythagoras Engine Factory in Nortalia in Sweden is kept as a museum, the Pythagoras Mechanical Workshop Museum, and has a functioning production line and extensive factory archives. Topic: See also Hot tube engine Crude oil engine Diesel engine Glow plug diesel starting assist Glow plug model engine Hesselman engine History of the internal combustion engine Fairbanks Morse Fuel injection Gasoline direct injection Indirect injection Internal combustion engine Lands Bulldog Prosper Lorange